Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I wanna talk about how to make the most of your PhD. So if you don't know, I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that helped me out during my graduate school that I wanted to give back and create something that was a little bit bigger than me. So I created this source sharing economy proofreading platform, which is the whole reciprocity.com. And then um, I started doing these YouTube videos to get the word out about this particular thing, because I think it's cool and I think it's very useful to get feedback from. from. So how do you actually make the most of your PhD? So there's lots of different things that you can do during your PhD that I don't think lots of people talk about. And then sort of the resources that are on the internet, I did kind of a quick Google of this, are not necessarily all that good. They're kind of canned responses in terms of making the most of your PhD. But I think that there are some really good things that you should do that I, I personally think that um, add a tremendous amount of value to when you do your graduate school or PhD. If you're in your master's program, this is this is completely applicable as well. So the first thing that I would personally do, and I, I would start thinking about this right now, is figuring out what you want to do for the rest of your life. So figure out your bucket list. So if you remember that movie from a few years ago uh, about all of the things that you wanted to do before you kick the bucket, right? Like, um, I forget the guys that were in it, but anyways, it was it was it was pretty nice, moving movie, right? And and uh, the whole premise behind it is figuring out all the different things you want to do before you kick the bucket, and really, that's what you should be doing during your PhD. And then, if you figure those things out, then you do research on those particular things, and it becomes a lot more fun, a lot more exciting when you do that. So, if you want to. If you want to explore Africa, well, then do research on Africa, right? Like, why not? If you want to go to Australia, well, then do research on Australia. If you want to understand, if you want to learn about skydiving, for example, well, then do research on why people take the risks of, of skydiving. Like, there's, there's lots of stuff that you can do, and you just have to simply figure out what you want to do. And then just do it, right? And and just pursue that. So part of the reason why I want to do this whole reciprocity project is because I think it's cool. And um, it's something I always wanted to do. So I decided to do it, right? I always wanted to create my own sort of platform, my, um, you know, software and stuff like that. So I, I thought that the heck with it. I'm just going to do it and have some fun at the same time. So um the second thing that I would do is when you're choosing the doctorate degrees and the topics or choosing the degrees that you're thinking of and the topics that you're thinking of, you should try to double up on both having it sort of applicable in the academic industry or, you know, academia, university. So thinking about how it can be theoretical and, you know, thinking how you can sort of advance science. But then think about how you can make it practical. So in case that doesn't fall through or something is not working right there in academia, then you can think about sort of the practical implications or what you can do with that. So you can maybe think about doing machine learning in academia and sort of advancing machine learning, but then there is a tremendous amount of benefit from doing that in the practical sense. So, but sometimes, there there might not be an easy translation between the two. And I'm not saying don't pursue the things that are theoretical. Those things have a tremendous amount of use and might just take 10 years by the time you get there. So for example, if you're doing a PhD or doing graduate work in batteries, for example, um, I'm a chemical engineer, my background uh, in my undergrad and battery research wasn't really all that exciting for a long time. And it wasn't until like the last 15 years that became a really big thing and people are actually excited about that. And um, so you could have pursued that and then sort of in industry, it would have took a long time before it to catch up. But then because you did that battery research, by the time it catches up, you'll you'll be in demand, right? So you have to think about that and think about what kind of degrees and what sort of research you're doing is actually applicable in multiple markets and trying to make it as flexible as possible. Think about the different opportunities you can choose going forward. Um, you know, a third thing that I think is important 
is just going to graduate seminars. Now you wanna balance off doing research and going to graduate seminars or going to seminars as much as you possibly can. Because sometimes, I mean, if you're, especially if you're going to a good university, there is stuff you could do every day. You could do seminars absolutely every day. There's always somebody exciting coming by and you can go to do all those kind of things. So you have to prioritize the ones that you wanna to go to, but go to the ones that make sense. And because you gain a tremendous amount from those, I always have really, um, great memories of listening to good speakers when they come in and, and give a talk. I can think of a lot of different people that I've watched over the years and, you know, they stick with you because they kind of, they kind of get in your mind. I don't know what it is, but li listening to somebody else or listening to the research actually gets into their mind. Now you're probably going to have to go to five to 10 before you go to one that is going to really stick and be exciting and, and sort of run with you. But all of those things, keep going with you and you learn a lot during the process of going to those graduate seminars. So I, I think there's a tremendous amount of value of doing those. Um, no, the, the fourth thing that, that this is hard for a lot of people because research kind of makes you grumpy um, and sort of pessimistic in a lot of different ways, but try to make your degree as joyful as you possibly can. So try to incorporate sort of fun activities into what you're doing in your graduate school. So, you know, maybe it, I don't know, maybe you like going out for beers with people after, you know, after, after you do work, we'll go do that kind of stuff. I always find that I don't feel good after I do that because beer kind of dehydrates me. And then the next day I feel miserable. So I kind of stay away from that as much as I can but then you know the social aspect of it is is a lot of fun so if that sort of gets you going then you should be trying to do that you know once or twice a week so personally i really like to do kind of really small things like smile when i work or try to smile when i work i know it's hard try to do this actually when you're working for a couple of hours try to smile when you're working it actually takes a lot of work because your mind it takes a lot of cognitive loan and um it, it, it takes a lot of cognitive capacity to write and to think. And so you're every, all the rest of your body sort of shuts down. There is this um, social psychologist or psychologist that does research in this area. Um, he does research on, on flow and, and I, I always mispronounce his name. It's Mikhail. Um, anyways, I can't remember <laughs> the, the last name, but anyways, he does research on flow and the whole idea of it is your your whole body sort of shuts down. Your your mind is thinking, and the rest of your body sort of shuts down. And so you you lose ability to think about you know what's going on with your hands and you know just smiling and stuff like that. So if you're thinking about smiling, it sort of remo it, it it removes you from that state of flow a little bit. But it also makes you feel a lot better than, you know, being emotionally drained after that. So just try that, you know, go for a little walks around campus, um, you know, go and grab a cup of coffee with somebody, you know, just do. So when I was going, working with my advisors, we'd go and grab a cup of coffee every once in a while. And I try to do that with my PhD students whenever I work with them. It's just instead of having a meeting in your office, which feels really cooped up, we just go for a meeting around around campus and just kind of go for a nice little walk and take notes and stuff like that. And it makes it way more enjoyable doing that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the fifth thing that I think is really cool, and it's a privilege to work at an institution at any sort of university is that they're, they do an amazing job of making the campus look amazing, right? It's beautiful. I've, I don't, I've never been on too many university campuses that are not beautiful. They just do a lot of work on that. They spend a lot of money on the grounds and doing the upkeep of grounds. And I think that's sort of a historical artifact. In, in you know going back into the sort of monastery time where people would work on grounds but um you should you should take advantage of this right it's kind of a privilege to work at a place where they care about where you work and the buildings and the architecture and things like that where they actually care and make sure that there's green space there's very few pl places in america in canada um, around the world where they actually care about the space 
that you work at and they make sure that there is green space. So go and take advantage of that. Go to different things around campus. Um, you know, go for walks around campus. They're generally very beautiful where I'm at in Florida. Um, you know, in between hurricanes, we do have very beautiful spaces that you can go to and, and check out those different places. Um, you know, a sixth thing that is kind of fun to try out is to attend graduate seminar um, ceremonies or going to, um, you know, ceremonies around campus. There's always some sort of ceremony or every couple of months or every month or some sort of ceremony that's going on and going to them are kind of fun. I know it's kind of weird to do that. Um, I get a kick out of it. I often will volunteer to be um, a participant in the ceremony somehow, or I have in the past. I haven't recently, but, um, you know, I, I have it because it's a lot of fun. Everybody's really excited. Everybody's happy. They're all dressed up. It's the one time I always say that there's two times on campus where people are really excited and happy to be there. It's the first week of school and then the last week of school. And then the rest of it is, you know, it's just a grind for everybody. So um, just just know that 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 is available that you can do. Um, and then the last thing that I would do is in my, you know, in, in, especially as, as you're around a little bit longer, you should um, become a mentor for somebody, a junior PhD student or junior graduate student, or, you know, just continue to help somebody out and somehow, and you're going to get a lot of joy from that. I started doing that recently in terms of my role as a professor. It's changed. I'm becoming much more of a mentor and it's becoming a lot more fun to do that. So that's one thing to, to try out and to explore doing that. So anyways, that's all I want to say. Have a good day and uh, do take care and do like this video if you enjoy it. All right. Take care. Bye.